G'day and welcome to episode 200 of Wine Week. We made it. 200. We made it. I'm Danny. And I'm Brad. In case this is the first time you're joining <laughs> us. And we're here at the Wine House down in South Bank in Melbourne in Victoria. Queen's Bridge Street. You can catch them online at winehouse.com.au. We are surrounded by great wine. This is pretty much, if I could pick my cellar, I think I'd like this one. Yeah, look, there's some dead arm from Darrenberg there. K Brothers Amory. Oh. Yum, there's some great stuff. Some good stuff here. over here. There's Wenderese, which we'll be talking about shortly. Giaconda. Some pretty rare stuff here. Unbelievable. Some great bits and bobs. <gasps> Down here, Johan Gale by Koleski, somebody that we've featured regularly through our 200 episodes. Some absolutely great wines down here. And we're going to talk about some of them that, well, things that we haven't featured on the show very regularly, things that we have, but great wines because this is 200 it's time to celebrate yeah look we, we thought about this long and hard how we were going to do this and we figured we had to get out of the office because we didn't have access to some of these wines so we wanted to come somewhere that did just so that we could show off a few of these real special treats yeah if you've got somebody else's platinum card you've managed to live <laughs> from their pocket what would you buy well one of the things that we would definitely buy that we haven't done on this show before the Henschke Hill of Grace this is definitely one of Australia's greatest wines and possibly Australia's real first growth. This is single vineyard, um, beautiful, from the Eden Valley, and this is a luscious wine. I still remember the very first bottle of this I ever had. Absolutely incredible. I was in love with it immediately. Maybe not so the very first uh, Penfolds Grange that I ever opened. I was a little bit uh, confused by it because it was such an old wine at the time. I think that was a 30-year-old bottle. Wasn't used to that old wine, but Hill of Grace, my lord, this is an amazingly good wine. This, the 04, definitely available in a lot of the places like Winehouse. Um, 05 is the current release, but 04 and 05, incredible vintages. Definitely amongst the absolute best that they've released in the last 20, 30 years. As I say, this is Australia's first growth, beautiful wine. And if you ever get a chance to grab a bottle of it, make sure you do, because, as I say, unbelievably beautiful. Yeah, look, Hill of Grace, up there, people put Grange, Hill of Grace in the two same sentences. I was lucky enough to go to a tasting relatively recently, 98 Grange, 98 Hill of Grace, next to each other. A lot of the good people there were saying that the Hill of Grace might have been showing a bit better, and that's, that's huge wraps on it. Yeah, slightly different style of wine. The Grange, a multi-vineyard uh, blend, Hill of Grace, one vineyard speaks of place, and that place is one of Australia's great vineyards. And talking of speaking from place, the Wendery wines are regarded as some of the best in Australia. And look, certainly a hard mailing list to get onto, as many people would attest. These wines aren't made in large quantities, and that's because they're, they're, they don't produce much each, each year. The vintages are quite small, and we've picked out the 98 Shiraz here. And this, this wine, I've been lucky enough to have this a couple of times. Not recently, I might, must add, but um, even as a youthful wine, it was, it's a big, bold wine. Um, look, James Halliday has famously been written up as calling it the iron fist in a velvet glove, and it is really that style of wine. It's, it's a blockbuster that will age for many, many years, and many people say that if you're going to sell these wines, don't even bother to open, open them in the first decade. Give them at least 15, maybe 20 years, and then you might be singing. Look, these vines here are ancient vines. These are some of the oldest in Australia, dating back to the, the late 1800s, which is quite remarkable. And, um, and look, Wendery, they've got a, a name synonymous around the world with fine Australian wine. And if you can get onto the mailing list, it's not that easy, but put your name down. It'll take a little while, but it's worth the wait because these wines, hard to get onto, but once you do and try an aged one, they're sensational. So, yeah. Wendery. Get onto it. Yeah, worth the wait is definitely the key point here. Worth the wait to get on the mailing list, but once you do, don't open them up straight away. I've I have been there when you've opened up a windery, you know, that's just of the current release, and it's like pouring good money down the sink. Really, <laughs> hold on to them. Ten years is right call before you even consider opening one up. Now, speaking of stuff uh, that's great when you open up ten years down the line, cross it. Polish Hill Riesling. We've talked about this Riesling. wine. Yeah, we've talked about this wine before. And if there's one great varietal that we've done more than anything else on the show over the years, might be Cabernet, might be Shiraz, but week in, week out, we talk about Rieslings because A, they're such great value for money, B, they're such great wines. And 
the pinnacle in Australia for most people, and very probably me, <laughs> the Grosset Polish Hill. Incredible wine. This, a 1997, and a 1997 Polish Hill is such an amazing treat. A great vintage, a great wine now, so good age Riesling. Um, you know, if I could somehow you know, transport myself back and tell myself constantly, stop drinking Grosset's <laughs> wines, Geoffrey will you know, allow you to hold on to them for longer than just two or three years, I'd be doing myself a favour because I do tend to go through them when I grab hold of them. There's a couple in my cellar, almost this sort of age. By gee, by jingo, by crikey, they're great when they get to this age. Beautiful honey, mellow characters, you know, those beautiful supple notes that just, just make them gorgeous when they get a bit older. Some tend to be a bit kerosene-y, I guess, but at the same time, a really good one doesn't push those notes right to the front and just becomes a super wine. And Jeffrey Grosset makes super wines that age super well. So, you know, the Grosset Polish Hill, how could we do anything else? <laughs> yes, arguably one of the best reasonings, not just in Australia, but the world, let's yeah. face it. Well, look, a 200th episode special, when we're featuring special wines, we couldn't go past featuring a top serious French wine. Now, we could look at your Grand Cru Burgundy or First Growth Bordeaux. Now, I've gone with a First Growth Bordeaux here because I was lucky enough to taste this wine actually in the cellars of Lafitte while I was over there a couple of years ago. And uh, this, is what we've got featured here is the 1990 Chateau Lafitte First Growth. So you're talking some serious dollars here. In fact, those people who listen to our radio show as well would know that some bottles were auctioned off for a very tidy sum recently. Yes. <laughs> In the few hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, they were a bit older than this wine. But look, at the pinnacle of Cabernet blends in the world, you have Bordeaux. And um, this is your traditional Bordeaux blend, which varies year from year, but mainly Cabernet dominant. Uh, look, a luscious wine. The thing that struck me about having this, and this was only a couple of years ago, the wine is already 16, 17, 18 years old, and it drank like a one or two year old red. It was remarkable how youthful it was, and that's because the Bordeaux style is built for the long haul. These are serious reds with quite big tannic, tannic structure so that they can go the distance, but at the same time, it was an incredible drink. And as our fantastic tour guide told us at the time, he said, um, would you like another glass? And of course we said yes. He goes, remember, this is not wine, this is Lafitte. <laughs> and it was an amazing experience. So, um, so look, if you get the chance to try some Lafitte, whether it's young or old, jump at it because it is a, a magnificent Cabernet. 1990, that's a baby. It is a baby, <laughs> an absolute baby. Now, speaking of top, top level wines, I couldn't finish this episode myself without talking about a sticky. You know that I talk about stickies fairly regularly on the show. Um, I talk about sauterne style, I talk about muskets, I talk about you know port styles. I love fortified and dessert style wine. I absolutely do. I might be in one of the minority in Australia, but in the world, this bottle, a Chateau Echem, this is not uh, a wine that's unknown and thought of as being daggy. This <laughs> is one of the pinnacles of wine in the world. The great sauternes are incredible Botrytis sweet wine. So they've actually got a bit of mould on the grape skin that sucks the water out of them, leaves them as these kind of shriveled little sultanas of gorgeousness. Gets turned into a wine like this and a chem, the absolute pinnacle. This is a 1990 um, and once again, these are wines that are designed to be cellared for a long time. Um, you know, 20 odd years, no, it's a baby. No problem. You know, 50 years for a uh, Ikem, that's when you start to get into the really good stuff. But my lord, does it get expensive down there? You know, a half bottle of current release Ikem, you're probably looking at around about four, five hundred dollars, something like this, 800 plus. Um, you know, but if you've got the wherewithal to have a go at one of these, you are in dessert wine heaven. And I think one of my ideal scenarios is to basically put a bottle of this, a bottle of the Seppel 100 year, and a couple of Rutherglen muskets all in a row and just have the time of my life because the, these are the greatest sticky wines in the world. We make some of them, Chateau I can definitely make one of them, the pinnacle of French dessert wines. How could I not finish on anything else? I think if you lined up those wines and sat there and drank them, you'd probably then have to quit drinking wine because I don't know that 
where's the next topping that? Yeah. <laughs> now, a lot of people talk about their their greatest meal ever, the final wine they've ever, they'll ever have, and you know their old Lafites, their DRCs, these sorts of things. For me. I'm definitely finishing <laughs> life with a dessert wine because that's how it's meant to be. It's the thing that finishes it all off. And for episode 200, that finishes it all off. I think it finishes it in fine. So look, all of these wines are pinnacle of winemaking. They're fantastic drinks. So if you do get the chance to sample any of them, jump at it. Yeah, and once again, thank you to the lovely guys and girls at Winehouse down here in South Bank in South Melbourne. We uh, just might make ourselves comfortable here for the rest of the day. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> all of these wines are actually for sale online, so if you, like us, like these, and you've got a bit of spare folding, you can grab on and get any one of these, as well as some of these great bottles around us. Ooh, Rindery Cab Malbec. Ooh, mm, dead arms. Love it. We'll and see them later on, I think. <laughs> yeah, we'll go back to doing some less expensive things next week for episode 201. Thank you all for watching us for 200 episodes, and we'll see you all again next, next week. week.